Welcome to the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plans, where you are the plan. Farm Bureau Health Plans makes it easy to get the health coverage you need for less than you think. See how at FBHP.com. With Titans Radio's Rhett Bryan and Dave McGinnis, I'm Mike Keith. We are glad to have you with us from the Bet MGM studio. And what I think is a very special edition of the OTP. Well, the OTP is for the OT people. That's right. And this is a prime example of that. It's, it is a prime example. We ask you to uh, visit, if you, if you were a person who visited my um, Instagram account, which is at 10 voice, at T-E-N-N voice, we ask you to submit your questions for Coach Mack because everybody always wants to know, what does Coach Mack think about this? What does he think about that? I couldn't get through on Mack Talk. And so here on this edition of the OTP, we have placed Coach Mack squarely in the Snickers hot seat. (laughs) And Rhett and I will be feeding him your question. So here we go. I'm going to go first. After being at both the college and NFL levels of coaching, what do you think is the biggest difference from a coach's perspective? The level of preparation. You know, in college, you're limited with the number of hours you can have at the National Football League. It's 25-7. Just the college, just, just, just the level of not only preparation, but the level of intensity that you have with your players preparing because this is their livelihood. This is everything. And so all professional players want is what can you do to help my game? And they don't, they don't, want, a, they don't want a lot of verbiage. All they, what can you specifically do to help me? every week in my career so that I can prolong it. But just the intensity of the preparation is a huge difference. When you were asked to come on Titans Radio with Mike Keith, who was someone you studied on in broadcasting to prepare you for the role as color analyst? You know, that's a that to me is a great question because really before Mike called me, I never really – thought about doing this and he didn't give me much time (laughs) (laughs) we didn't have much time because (laughs) because i understand now the circumstances but uh, i was i was called on a monday and as we were talking through it i said well when do you need me there and he said well we're going to new york saturday and i went this saturday (laughs) And, and so so i really didn't have a whole lot of time you know to 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 do that since then since then, I pay a lot of attention, you know, to the broadcasting and 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 what's and what's going on, and I I know that I know that uh, he's not a play-by-play guy, but I've always always been a huge huge Jim Nance fan just by the fact of just how professional he handles what goes on, and so. Well, you're we talking do. about a gold standard broadcaster. Well, but I mean, I think that's what Titans Radio is, is a gold standard. And uh, so anyway, there you go. What is the best name of a play call that you've ever heard? Now, I've been a defensive coach you know, until I was a head coach. And then I was an assistant head coach, so I was in charge of all of it. But defensively, when you have to call out the formations as far as they line up in – Kings, trip, speed, flip, left, X, Y, Z, yo-yo motion, Y, flare. So what is that defense? Kings, trip, speed is 11 personnel. Okay. Because in the National Football League, some people use numbers, you know, 10, 11, 12, 20. And some people use deck of cards, ace, kings, queens, Mm -hmm. you know, flush, jacks. So Kings is 11 personnel. Trips, speed means all three receivers on the – one side of the formation, the tight end is X. He's on the wide side of the formation. On the trip speed side, you've got you've got you got you've got Z, W, and Y. Yo-yo motion. Okay, King's trip speed. You've got yo-yo motion. That that means the inside receiver from the speed side starts to the center and then yo-yos back to get into what we call a nine-ball stack on the three receiver side. That's what that is. Okay. Yep. Your question, Red Brian. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> do, How do you remember all that? That's an, an excellent follow-up. The, the same way you remember everything you remember. Uh, you, I mean, you've got to I – mean, I've done it for a long time, a long time. It, 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 it's been my life. And so, you know, I 
That's how. I've been doing it a long time. Same way you and, – and you've got to st- – when I first went to the Bears, they didn't ask this question, but it was before we had computers. And so, you know, I was the linebacker coach, but I was also the, the defensive quality control coach. And so the the playbook that we put together to incorporate Buddy Ryan's 46 and then Vince Tobin's defenses, uh, you had to draw it all by hand. You had to draw it all by hand. And then you wrote it out, and then you gave it to the secretary, and she typed it, you know, on that on that paper that made that made copies, and then you ran it off, you know, on the machine. So, I wrote that whole thing. I wrote the whole thing, and so when you do that, you learn it. It becomes that. Say say that again one more time. King's trip, speed, flip left, X wide, Y Y, y yo yo motion. Isn't that a great example? As you repeat that, of why young players, rookies have such a hard time coming to the NFL where they don't have play calls, especially the offensive players. They don't have play calls. They never deal with it. They just see cards on the sidelines, and that tells them what to do. That's a perfect example why. It it really is. That's got to be brutal. It it really is. And and that's a defensive version of that. You know, being able to talk about like on the headset, what are they doing, Mac? I got I got King's trip, speed flip left. You know, X wide, Y. You know, yo yo. Before we had all of these tablets and, and things, the West Coast offense is even more intricate than that, coming from the offensive side of it. Wow, mind blown, mind blown. All right, this one, this is an excellent conversation at OTP to begin with. This is going to raise it a notch. Do you think NFL officiating is getting worse, better? Or is it staying the same? Because I listen to you and Mike during Titans games, and I always agree with your assessments on what's happening on the field. It's not as good as it used to be. It's not as good as it used to be from top to bottom. I I think, uh, you know, a lot of the best officials right now are in the television booth. And you've had some really, really uh, veteran officials retire. And so people coming in, it's just like rookie players coming in. They have to learn the game. They have to learn the game, and they only, you can't manufacture experience in any profession, but especially in this business because everything is so immediate, and that's why you see so many. And, and when I'm sitting up there with Mike Keith, and I mean, he's always spot on. With, I mean, he can, he can call out and tell you what the penalty is and how much they should mark it off and where the ball should be immediately. Because those are the details you have. And we've seen games as, as to when, you know, they've marked off 12-yard penalties. And there's not 12-yard penalties on a, on a 10-yard penalty play, you know. from So just the administration of it, it's not as good as it's been. It's really not. Hey, Titans fans, it's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee and kick off the action. Whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home, Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. Your questions for Coach Mack, <laughs> you, you submitted them to me at 10Voice, my Instagram account, And we're passing them on. Titans' immediate football question comes next. As well as Tajay Tajay Spears is playing right now, what ways can Tim Kelly keep he and Derrick Henry involved without limiting snaps or telegraphing plays? Pony personnel is what we've seen, both in the backfield at the same time and what we call a red set. Uh, You've already seen that. We saw it a lot you know, during the practices we get to go to before the season started that we can't talk about. But we saw him doing that a lot. And there, and he's using it in a red set, which is a split back set. And and he's he's alternating whether he sets uh, Derek to the tight side of the formation or to the open side of the formation. And you're going to uh, you're going to see a lot of different plays come off of this because it opens up a multitude of things you can do, bringing him across the backfield, double screens. There's a lot of things that he can do. I mean, that just a myriad of it. And plus, with the threat of both of them being able to run and they're distinctly different runners, but they're both very effective with what they do. The, the pony personnel, I think we'll start seeing more and more of. 
After the first two games of the season, what is your opinion on Tim Kelly as the offensive coordinator? I think he does a nice job of layering calls. And layering calls, as a defensive coach, you, you always, when, you, when you're, you're scouting the, the guy that's calling plays that's your opponent, you want to see, first of all, if he's layers calls, which means is he building calls one upon the other with his personnel groups, depending on what you've deployed over there on defense. And then is he stacking calls? And then the other part is, is he setting up calls? Because the really good play callers set calls up. In other words, they'll set calls up series by series, set calls up by, you know, put a, put a certain personnel group out there in a certain formation, see how the defense on a down and distance is going to adjust to it, and then come back to something that can counter the way he now sees the defense setting up to that. I think he does all of that. All right, so I've got two sort of back-to-back -back here that tie in, if mm -hmm. that's okay. Coach Mack in the <laughs> Snickers hot seat. Here it comes. Coach Mack, who is the one current player in the NFL you wish you could coach? Oh, that uh, – I like that. Mm -hmm. I like I – like, mm -hmm. I, like, I like that question a lot. It can either be offensively – yeah, it does not say defense or could offense. Could be anybody. Could be anybody. Well, I'd love to have Miles Garrett. If yeah, I'm I, I thought you were going to say that. If I'm calling defense, why why is he so different than like other edge rushers? He's a big man. He's a big man that that plays like a little man. He can he he's speed to power. He's athletic at through the roof, but he's also a Gumby bend the edge guy. You can line him up in multiple places. He can stand up in two point. He can go down in three point. He can he can do it all. He's the number one pick in the draft for a reason. The number one. Some number one picks in the draft have not been legitimate players. This guy is a physical phenom, and he's a good good football player that you can do so much with. And he's a smart guy. 275 pounds, plays like a guy 235 or 240 in terms of his movement. You got it. I mean, right there. And, and plus, I mean, he's a, he's a relentless player. He is relentless. He was, that, he was that way at Texas A&M. I mean, he's a special, special player. All right, so this may be the same answer. If you could add one NFL defensive player to the Titans roster this year, who would you add and why? Well, how about that dude? Well, that's what I figured you'd say. <laughs> so let's take Miles Garrett out. Who else would be a guy that you would add if you could add one defensive player to the Titans roster this year? Who would you add and why? I would really I would really like to be able to I would really like to be able to add a shutdown corner. Okay. Just a true a, 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 a true now that that can be a varied opinion on who that dude is. But to me, one of the most pure shutdown corners in this league still now, we're saying if he's completely healthy, is a Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, and some guy can just – because with the, I had one of those guys in my long coaching career in Aeneas Williams, and I could do anything I wanted with him. And we were in the NFC East at the time, and I, could, I knew going in game planning against the Cowboys twice a year that I could tell him in that first meeting, Nicky, you've got Michael Irving. And the rest of the 10 of you, here's what we're going to do to try to stop the rest of them. You know, Emmett Smith and all that group. But when you have that guy, it's a special feeling as a defensive coordinator when you, or you're able to do that. All those teams that Deion Sanders played for, that was the guy. And it makes a big difference. All right, this was going to take a minute to, to lay out here in your answer. This person's asking, explain fourth quarter roles of a head coach, including challenges, coaching, play calling, clock management, and any other duties. Well, first of all, all of that, when, you, when you're an assistant coach, you very rarely think of any of that. You know, because you're, you're, dialed, in, you're dialed in with your people. If you're a coordinator, you know, you're working your side of the ball. As a, uh, when I became a head coach, and you, you, you're, in, you're thrown into a different – world of the game the world managing a game is much different than coaching a position during during a game and so you have to be aware of everything and the other thing the thing that happens too though guys is it's really really important to have somebody you really trust in the box you've got to have somebody you really trust you've got to make the call but if you've got somebody in the box you can trust that can give you information 
when you ask for it in an instant, in an instant. And especially with the challenges and those types of things that make a huge difference, uh, managing timeouts or being able to, to, to play the clock game. I was very fortunate in my career to start out. Mike Ditka was really good at this stuff. Then I come here and, and, and work for Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher was really good at this stuff. And so, you know, when I became a head coach, then I would pick the brains of those guys as to what, how it was. Dan Reeves was, was really good. So I would sit with those guys, you know, when I would have opportunities to just what we're doing right now and talk about those instances, but they come up and they happen so fast that you've got to go into it. You can prepare all you want, but you have to be able to react in the moment. But you have to have a real working knowledge of the rules because the rules make a difference. Mike Vrabel's got a great handle on this. He understands the game within the game. But as a head coach, much different than being a coordinator because now you're playing the big picture throughout all of it as to where coordinators are playing their side of it. Coach Mack, it doesn't come up often, but I think the rule about fumbling the ball through the end zone is maybe the worst rule in all of sports. Would you be in favor of changing this rule, and do you think it would pass if it was presented to the competition committee? It's been presented for years, and it never has passed. And, and, and the, the reasoning is, is the end zone is, a, is an entity unto itself. It's an entity unto itself, and so things are different down there. And there, there is a premium on holding on to the football until you cross the, the goal line. And that's always been, I mean, I've been in, you know, I've been in meetings, uh, you know, where it was competition committees. I've been, I've been through all of this. It, it, this is not the first time it's come up, but that is the, is the argument that the, the goal line is, is, the, is the, the final outcome of what offenses are trying to do. And part of the goal line is getting the ball over the goal line get the ball over the goal line and if you tried and you fail to do that then there there should be some sort of uh, retribution rather than just saying the ball's out of bounds if you fumble it through the end zone and you don't and you know and and, and it and hasn't crossed the, the goal line and you're not in possession and you're of not it. in possession of it then it comes back out to the 20 i don't I th think they'll ever change it i think it makes total sense because i mean what's the object of the game is to score more points than the other team you score points in various ways, but the most obvious way is to score a touchdown, which is to be in possession of the ball when you break the plane. And if you're not in possession of the ball when you break the plane, then it's it. There has to be a punishment for that if you get there, and and you 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 fumble. I, I think I you know talking to Vrabel, he certainly doesn't ever think it'll pass competition committee no. while he's on there. No, and. Sounds like you've been in the competition committee. You know who you sounded like just then? Who? And this is a real compliment. Okay. Mike Pereira. Oh, well, thank you. Mike Pereira. By the way, to, can we shout him out and ho hope he feels better? Uh, he's what a, great, what a good dude. What a great person. And look, you talk about the, the, the officiating that we talked about early on. Oh, yeah. When he was in charge, perfection. Well, and the other th – I tell you what Pereira brought to it. He brought a transparency and a clarity to it when he was doing it for the league – it was, and some of the other guys, Dean Blandino did a good job, but mm -hmm. Pereira was the gold standard because suddenly, I mean, th they were a little bit like the Wizard of Oz, ignore the man behind the curtain, sort of, we don't ever question it. We, and Pereira took that down. He said, well, we didn't get this one right, or we did get this one right, or here's why we're doing this. And a lot of times when they explain things, like we've just had the discussion about fumbling the ball through the end zone, when you stop and think about it in that way, it makes more sense. A lot of the talking heads on TV and in media just saying, oh, that's awful. Well, they don't stop and think about why the rules of the game were put into effect. And the game in that way still hasn't changed. We, we don't win games on stats in fantasy on Sundays. We win games by who scores the most points. And the, the end zone is sacred. And, that, and, that, and see, and that's why I say, and I was, I was very honest when I said that, that's the way prayer would explain it. Sure. I've been in competition committee meetings and meetings with just head coaches and, you know, when you, when you go to the owner's meetings, and when he would stand up and explain things, he did just what you did, and, and everybody would go, okay. I mean, one of the greatest things I ever saw was, when, was, was uh, after the tuck rule game mm -hmm. when, you know, uh, the Raiders – 
I mean, there's microphones. The Raiders stood up and called him out, brought a football and said, explain right. this to us. Right. And he did. And he did. And he did, just like that. So shout out to Mike Pereira and for you for sounding like him on that. Well, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. If the team wins and Andre Dillard appears to struggle, is Nicholas Petit Frere an option at left tackle since Chris Hubbard seems to be doing an adequate job on the right side? Well, Nicholas Petit Frere has got to get back into the swing of things first. I mean, that, that, that you know, he, you can't expect somebody to come off of a six week suspension without having done football things. I'm sure he's working out on his own because he cannot be in the building. But, you know, to come back in, I mean, he's going to have to work himself back in first. And so th- that, to me, is something that is pretty far in the future right now. And uh, we've seen this a little bit, though, just with what Dylan Radens has done. You know, and, and so if you're on the team and you're an offensive lineman, the biggest value is if you can play multiple positions. And so, but as I said, the first thing that NPF has got to do is get back in the swing of playing NFL football. What is your favorite defensive and offensive package to run? Well, this is it's all predicated on down and distance. It's down and distance because of the matchups. Matchups on down and distance are, you know, are everything. But as a defensive coach, early on when it first came into existence, the hardest personnel group to defend on first and second down was thirteen personnel, which is because you would you would have you would have uh, one running back, three tight ends, and one wide receiver. But those those tight ends could split out and make it look like eleven personnel with three wides, one back. You could make it look like twelve, you know, two tights, two wides, and your matchups is what you're working on. So now, as a defensive coach, you're thinking: Do I play base defense against this with four down and three linebackers? Do I play nickel? Do I do I do I put an extra defensive back in there? Do I go to an extra backer package to be able to to take to take care of the size they have in there now? Or if they split them out, are my backers able to work in space? So 13 personnel was always a, a big problem when it when it first when it first you know came into the league you know for that defensively defensively I always liked to be able to play the big nickel because with the big nickel you know you had a chance with a four man front to use that the big nickel guy in a lot of different ways you could you know you could rob the middle with him you could play him as a linebacker uh, you could match him on a tight end, say a specific tight end that was a really good receiver, but he could hold up in the run game. I always liked the big nickel because that one piece, you know, it, it's like it's like what Nick Saban does, and and all the all the defenses in the Southwest Southeastern Conference play this star, you know, thing, because it it gives you the multiplicity without having to change personnel groups all the time, and it, uh, on on defense. This is my final question I have. What pub will Coach Mack be hanging out in London so I could buy him a pint and he can educate me on how Jack Gibbons has gone from a player who was waived last year to a starter this year and is really making an impact? He appears to have a nose for the football. Go Frogs. I love the question, and I love the ending of that. I'll be in that pub where we had the radio show when we were over there the last time. Uh, Bed, Bath, and Beyond, was that the name of it? I don't, I don't, I don't think The that Barrow was it. Boy and Banker. <laughs> and there it is. Is that where you're going? Yeah. Well, so uh, a lot of the things the Titans are going to do in London are going to be announced next week. So where we might be or where everybody's gathering or whatever may happen, I think some of those things will be announced next week, and they might ask you to go to one of those spots. Yeah, I'd, I'd go to all of them. Okay. I, w- I, will, I will go to You're not going to go to Bed Bath & Beyond? I, I and- go- <laughs> but that was so much fun last time. I mean, it was just – It was tremendous. It was incredible. In fact, I spent a good time, a good bit of time with some of your family upstairs at that one. It was tremendous. Yes, my family's going again. And I'll be with them. It was was tremendous. So, yeah, as soon as they get those locations, let me know. All right. I'll be there. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. (laughs) That's right. The deal is finalized, and SeatGeek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, you haven't been listening to the OTP, so what's your problem? If you, 
that, that's not in there. That's, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Not very nice. If you have – seriously, what's your problem? If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets – SeatGeek probably appreciates that, right? Whether you're buying or selling tickets to the Titans game or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans – can fan nicely done Rhett the questions for coach Mack continue I'm going to let Rhett take it home right here I'm you you do the rest of them I'm just going to relax all right we're going to take it home here where would you rank the Titans defense throughout the entire NFL when they are fully healthy yeah rankings rankings are kind of like fantasy football I mean it's all up for it's all up for grabs it's all about it's all about production I would say just off of production off of production they're really stout against the run, and I think by their own admission, they'd like to tighten it up in the back end some. You know Jim Schwartz very well. What does he bring to the Cleveland defense that makes them one of the league's best? Also, the Browns have played a lot of man coverage in their first two games. What are some of the concepts that Tim Kelly can run to set the offense up for success. Yeah, I game plan with Schwartzy for five seasons here as an assistant head coach and linebacker coach. And so he, he's very intricate in what he does. He studies matchups a lot. Uh, he's he's but he he leans on a base of a four down of a four down scheme. And he does that so that he can cover with seven. You talk about getting creative with your coverages. Anytime you can cover with seven over five eligible receivers, you've, you've either got three over two and four over three. I mean, that's, that's what defensive coaches work for. But to get that, you have to be able to take care of the run and the pass with four people up front and not having to bring anybody down. The times where he will get really creative is if he, catch, if he gets you in third and seven plus, third and eight plus. We always had special blitzes on third down, you know, that we that the opponent had not seen before to be able to uh, attack coverages. But his his preparation is very very detailed oriented, and he he covers everything as a coordinator. And and this this is for the OT people will take you behind the scenes a little. When when you when you're working on a, an opponent, the scout team is running cards. But you have to draw cards so that you can show them in the huddle as to what, what the offense wants to look like. But those cards have to be really precise or guys are looking at them, you know, and you're trying to run practice on time. And, you know, the good, I mean, I've seen Jeff Fisher look at, you look at cards before and throw them out. Who drew that? Who drew that? You know, because the guys can't read it. Jim Schwartz, as a coordinator, normally the coordinators don't do this. He drew every card. He drew every card. And I used to pride myself on being a good card drawer because it takes you got to be detailed and it, it takes time. And he told me he told me this when I when I first came here to work for him. I said, hey, look, because I came in here as a, as a head coach. And then I said, look, I understand, you know, tell me which cards you want me to draw the run, you know, the run game, run series. He said, coach Mack, I draw the cards. He says, you may be able to draw cards, but mine are Rembrandt's. And I went. Really? He doesn't lack for confidence. And I went, I went, really? <laughs> I went, really? But listen to this. The first time I saw him, I went, I look like a street painter to this. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, so anyway, very detailed. Fascinating. So his card should be in the Louvre in France. Rembrandt. Okay. Finally, Coach Mack, what do you believe are the keys to going on the road in Cleveland to come out with a win? You got to control their front first. You cannot let their defensive front control the game and then our defense needs to outplay their defense i mean this is this is what this is this is what you're looking at offensively you've got to stay out of the third and chains and when i say third and chains i'm talking about third and seven plus you've got to stay you've got to stay out of that and then defensively something i think that they would want to do that i that i see get some turnovers turn the ball over and Keep it. When we've got it, keep it. But defensively, get some turnovers. Uh, this is going to be a big a big game for defenses trying to see who's who in the zoo out there. And so th this is going to be really important uh, to control their front and then to let our front go eat. Cleveland has not allowed anyone in the red zone so far this year. That's good defense. That's good defense. They, they have not had a red zone 
defensive snap so far in their first two games because no, I think the closest anybody's gotten is like their 25. They have given up less than 400 total yards to Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. So they are allowing less than 200 yards per game. That's good defense. That's good defense too. But interestingly enough, they have only two takeaways and they have only four sacks so far, which is kind of strange. They've turned the ball over six times and they've given up nine quarterback sacks. So their offense has not been very efficient or very clean, as you would say, but their defense is through the roof. Well, because he's got people. I mean, it's it's all about the players, but if you can we, – we went back to what the difference in professional play- – Schwartzy gives his guys a chance to do what they do and doesn't try to muddle it up a lot. So would you be willing to do this again if we ask for co- questions for Coach Mack? Would you be willing to do it again? I want – I want the OT people to come to Bed Bath and Beyond in London, See, and so that we can, gotta, so that we can, we probably got to stop joking about this because aren't they out of business they anyway? Are. Okay, yeah, that changed. So that's one thing, and the second thing is, <laughs> if they aren't out of business in London. <laughs> The OT people will show up there expecting to see you in the crockpot aisle, and you <laughs> and you won't be there buying a new bedspread. You know, and I a, waited by a KitchenAid and mixer it, for two so hours, we, and no there's, coach. Mack. There's literally <laughs> going to be an announcement. What was the real name of it, Rhett? Barrow Boy and Banker. Okay. I think Bed Bath and Beyond is better. <laughs> I absolutely. Yeah. Not. I don't even know what all that uh, means. Yeah, that's. Uh, but you know. But uh, again, next week. Information is going to come out for those going to London about what's going to happen in terms of the uh, the get together sort of thing, and uh, I'm hoping we can be there, and I'm hoping you'll choose to be there. But there there will be like an official thing. That's so great, and you know I've been over there quite a few times as a coach, but now when we went over as a bro, I can we can interact with the fans now as what we do right as a coach you can't you know and, and, and I, you know the places that i've gone well, you were there for like five hours or something crazy weren't you you stayed a long time the last time we were the there, last time 2018 yeah well, why would you leave <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> i mean you were with we were with titans fans in london well i left because my family said we're leaving that's why <laughs> well, i left that's, well it's in the I mean, grand different. old time mike because uh let's well, yeah. see javon curse oh, eddie george i saw that keith bullock <laughs> keith bullock it just yeah. kept going yep. and going and going yeah, I, I coach mike won't leave now with what i'm doing now and this second career that you've afforded me I, if i'm if the fans are there i'm in the middle of it i know <laughs> i know well, <laughs> again next week that's going to come out um also want to mention that uh, we hope that you will subscribe to the Titans YouTube channel because we've got a lot of great stuff on the Titans YouTube channel right now. Like everything Coach Mack does on TV, uh, the video version of the OTP, different things from our various shows are on the Titans YouTube channel. And it's easy to find. It is very easy to find. It's easy to find and it's easy to pull up and it's it's really – not because I'm on it. That doesn't. But but the production of it's tremendous. It is tremendous. And you can help by hitting the like button when you subscribe, and also hitting the notification bell so that you're notified when there's new content, which there is every day. That, there's new stuff every day. Everything we do. I mean, no matter where you are in the world, if you go to the Titans YouTube channel, uh, you can find something new every day that helps you get ready for Sunday. Or, you know, like some of our our other outstanding features that we do on on various things. We'd love for you to for tune in and, and stay up with it. Yeah, and the people over there at Bed Bonkers and Bath can... Bed Bonkers and Bath. Well, uh, well he's pulling out a different reference. I'm trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, they can see it too. That's right. And that's the thing is we love meeting the international fans when we went to London. And, you know, now we're going to get... At some point, we're going to get to go to Germany. That'll happen for us. But Madrid, too. That's going to happen. See, I saw I'm, that I, I, recently. I'm all for that. And just – I was with the Bears. We went to Gutenberg, Sweden. Nice. Played the Vikings. We went – Was everybody for the Vikings there? You think? <laughs> we went – we went, we, went, <laughs> we went to uh, Berlin to play the 49ers. We were there for a week. Uh, it, it, it's it's an experience, and we had fans all over the place, and and the Titans fans that showed up in London last time was wow. massive. It was really cool. So, looking forward to that. Looking forward to winning every game we play up until then, and it'll really be rolling. There you go. 
for Coach Dave McGinnis, who was kind enough to take your questions and sit in the Snickers hot seat. And thank you for the questions, by the way, to the OT people. And for Rhett Bryan, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us from the Bet MGM studio for the OT people.